Hello, this is BJ from Hearns, and welcome to part three of uh, my little tutorial about using the Scale 75 Artist Acrylics. Uh, so this is a basic range, which has got the, uh, the tones of the black, the white, and then the primaries of the blue, the yellow, and the red, and then also the brown tone. So we started painting this a little while ago. So we're into our third installment, which is also our third week. So I've got my wet palette here. It survived a couple of weeks already. Looks okay, but I think I'm going to change it um, with a fresh um, sheet just so uh, we've got a little bit more space to work with. Okay, let's take the cover off here. Okay, so you can see all the colors that I worked on before. It's still a bit moist here. Some of the paints have dried up a little bit, but they're still workable. So rather than just top these up, I'm gonna take it off and we'll start again with some fresher mixes. All right, so let's just take this off. And we've got pre-cut bit of paper here. All right, so this is a totally dry piece of paper. So just put it on so that it absorbs a little bit of paper, uh, water. So it stays in place, otherwise it's gonna curl up on us. Okay, that's looking pretty good, I think. All right, so I'm gonna put out all my sample colors now. So you see the figure I've just got there? That's as we left it. So that's a very quick one hour, pretty much skin tone. And then another hour of uh, doing the rest of the details, which we could, didn't quite finish, but it looks fairly decent. So this third installment will show you how we finished the rest, particularly the clothing. And then uh, I'll also show you how I uh, do all the finer uh, touch-ups on everything else. So cleaning up the face, perhaps uh, uh, more definition around the eyes, lips. And then also uh, there's all the details on the shoes that we haven't done yet and I haven't really decided what to do there, but we'll work it out as we go along and see what sort of design we want to put in there. All right, so I'm just putting on all my samples of color back on the palette. Do the red, just got one more of the brown. So these are fairly important for getting my skin tones back. All right, there goes our brown. All right, pop all those back here. Oop, bit of dust. All right, let me get my trusty white brush. It's one I've been using before. This does all my major mixes first. All right, I'm gonna make a go at, I think I'll continue on with the, the leather bag. And then we'll do a bit more touching up of the hair, the shirt, and then the shoes. And then we'll tighten up the face. Okay, so I'm gonna do my mix of that tan color. So I've got a bit of brown, white. Bit of yellow. That's your red. Just so lighten it up a touch there. All right. A bit of water to make it a bit easier to flow. Let's have a look now. This one's probably a bit more orange, so I touch. More yellow. Just trying to get it closer to where I left it before. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because it's just going to be coated all over again. A little bit of variation makes for a bit of interest, I think. Okay, I'm going to put on my little googly eyes so I see what I'm doing. A bit okay. Let's 
get into it. So I'm just putting on another coat of this tan. So the first one only had uh, perhaps two coats. It's a little bit patchy in areas, so this should give us our final coat. So I chose this particular tan because it's a good contrast for the rest of the, uh, the clothing. Nice leather colour. Okay, so after I complete this, I'm going to do a little bit of shading on the bag. And then we'll move on to finish up the rest of the bits and pieces. Okay, you might notice that going over the straps can be a bit difficult, so I've gone over a little bit of the shirt. So that's why I'll leave the shirt to last, because then I can clean up all the, the over paint. I've done and leave a really clean finish. All right, just the base of the bag. Use a finer brush for doing around the uh, straps. Finer brush is going to give a lot more control. Also, these straps are pretty fine. Okay, so there's a bag, done with that coat. And I'm just going to add a little bit of variation to this, this tan colour. Make a little shadow tone. So this slightly darker tone is going to be used for the insides of the creases of the bag. A little bit more water there, so it's a bit thinner. Act a little bit like a glaze. Okay. So I'm concentrating in the shadow area here. Paint it all along the side of the arm, give it definition. Now a little bit of shadow tone here. Okay, so it's a bit like that. Now it's a fairly subtle shadow tone. Still around the back here as well. Now around to the bottom. So the bottom is obviously going to be in shadow all the time. So I'll paint all of the bottom this darker tone. Okay. All right, 
looking pretty good. I'm just going to go over it a little bit more. Because I made it like glaze, it is quite gentle. So you just go over certain areas that you want darker. Here. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so you have a close look there. Let's clean this off. I feel like I need something a bit darker though. So I'm going to get something with a lot more brown in it. Alright, so that's around the arm, giving a definition. What's there? I'm going to add some of this to the deeper shadow. That can be a little bit darker because there's quite a lot of shadows there. I'm just going to go to the inside of the bag because it's going to be quite dark, quite closed off. Okay, that's pretty much a the bag there. I think I'll come back to it a little bit later and do a little bit more highlight. But I'm pretty happy with the way it's looking at the moment. So this is a pretty quick paint um, build. So if you've got a lot of figures to do, you can see just how how decent a figure can come out just after a few hours of work. Uh, when I'm painting my own figures, I would be spending maybe two, three, maybe even four days just making sure the face itself was perfect. Okay, let's do. I think we'll clean up the the denim shorts. Tonally wise, I think it looks pretty good. I'm just going to make a darker tone here to emphasise the separation between the shirt and the shorts, and then perhaps on the bottom of the shorts as well, where there's I need some definition to the line of the leg. Okay. So I've mixed up quite a dark blue there. Clean around the bottom of the bag. Okay, you're looking okay. Just adding a few more darker lines towards the 
bottom parts here. Alright, just going around the base of the shorts now, just where it touches the skin tone. Gives a nice clean line. Okay. Alright, so there you go. Done with the shorts. Okay, let's detail some of the, uh, the shoes now. Shoes will probably do with a little bit more white. Just clean up some of these edges where there's a bit too much uh, flesh overtone. Okay, so this particular white I'm putting on is a little bit thicker than I did before. It's going to have a bit more coverage, so this is going to act like a, uh, a highlight tone as well. So just concentrating around the top areas here, I want it brighter. Just cleaning up all these edges, like so. All right, so that's a white cleaned up a bit. I'm going to do a light grey now to act as a wash to give some definition to the, the laces. So I don't need a lot of black. See, just one little touch of black has turned this really dark. That's probably about right. Bit of water. Bit more, get it really thin. That's probably a bit light. Let's just do a little touch of black. All right. Let's concentrate on these laces. Now all these uh, shadow tones and highlights are going to bring out so much more. It will add a lot of uh, depth. Give me a greater degree of uh, three dimensionality. So, just put a little bit of this along the uh, the edge where the leather meets the, the sole as well. Alright, so that's with the grey one. It's quite subtle. Don't want to overdo the contrast because white is quite easy to overdo contrast. You go too black, 
and then it, it just looks too much. There's, there's too much um, uh, dynamic um, shadowing going on. So these are the shoes. All it probably needs is some designs on the sides. Uh, what do we do? Guess we could probably do. How about some stripes? Do a couple of blue stripes. I think blue will work well with the rest of this. All right, let's do some blue. We'll do some primary blue here. So blue stripes. All right, so there's there's two stripes there. Now let's just replicate that and do it on this side. drops on either side. Okay, just to keep things simple, I think two stripes each side. Looks pretty good. We can clean that up a bit later, but that's pretty good. All right, so let's go on with cleaning up the shirt. So our shirt predominantly white. Let's make our white mix. All right, so we've got a, a bit of a mix here already. Yes, it looks a bit grey at the moment, so that's probably because I've only done a little bit of shadow work and a couple of light coats across the top. So we'll do this for the highlights. All right. So obviously when you're looking at highlights, so you're concentrating on the tops of the creases and doing more so across the, the top of the body because that's where the sun's coming down from and adding less as it goes down the shirt. So I'm cr concentrating across the top of the shoulder. going down the sleeve and progressively I just highlight the very very tops of creases as I go down the bottom of the sleeve finished one arm go around the back and 
and while we're doing this around the hair we can trim up any uh, uh, over paint marks where the hair's gone onto the white sections. Okay, just trimming off the back of the hair here. And then coming up to the bag, there's a little bit of overpainting there, particularly around the straps because they're a bit hard to, to concentrate on. Okay, so we're just going to continue on. A fair bit of white here. Most of this figure is white. Just following all these crease marks. Okay, getting close to finishing on the back. And now moving on to right shoulder. So just got to clean up around this hair, the strap. Oop. Got a little bit too carried away there on the hair. We can clean that up later. Okay, so we're on to the last arm. Okay, as in the front of the shirt. So again, concentrating on all the, the taller parts. Okay, that's almost there. I'd like there to be a bit more contrast between the actual front of the shirt because there'll be a, a section where it's buttoned up and there'll be much more degree of shadow there. So, make a slightly darker grey. So we can emphasise that. Okay.
so that's quite thin looks like a, a wash so I probably see it there just straight down the center might add a little bit more around some of these deeper creases here I just added them around the edges of the uh, the collar as well. Okay. Alright, so from here, I think we're pretty close. So basically all I've done is I've cleaned up the uh, the bag, cleaned up the white, or the shirt, the jeans, the shoes, and then it's pretty much, I'm gonna to touch up around the face, and then it'll be a final clean up around the hair and anywhere where there's some stray paint. So, all right, let's go under the face, and then we'll do the clean up. Right, so what I can tell from here, I really like some more definition on the lips. The lips are probably a bit, a bit bigger in the red than I'd like. Probably a bit more definition in the eyes. Okay, so I'm just going to do some more um, flesh mix. Okay, so I've used my yellow and the red to get the orange, turning that with some brown, and then we'll lighten that up with some white. That's too red. Alright, so it's getting close to the flesh tone I'm looking for. And now I need some more white. Oh, I think I'm running out of white here. A bit of white. Okay. Alright, this is my base flesh. Okay, let's see what tone I need to get to here. Okay, it probably needs to be a bit lighter than this. Let's make another patch here. Okay, that mix looks pretty good. Right, let's trim around the lips.
Okay, so that's the bottom of the lip. Go for the top of the lip. And adjust this side a little bit. Okay, so that's around the lips. Okay, so let's do a little bit of more definition around the eyes and the eyebrows. I remember someone did mention that she looked a little bit worried. So maybe I should take less worry out of her by changing her eyebrows a bit. Okay, think or do a little bit of a dark tone under the eyes. Slightly pink. Okay, let's clean up around about the brow mark a bit more. Okay, just cleaning up a little bit more around here.
Just cleaning up the top of the eye. Okay, just going to put a line in between the lips. I don't ever get rid of this worried look. It's mainly in the lips, I think. I think that's going to be pretty much it. Okay, so there we go. So I've cleaned up the face a little bit around the hairline. I think that's pretty good. Now, if I had days on end, I'll continue working on that and we'll make it really smooth. But the whole idea of the demonstration is to show you how to quickly make a really nice, decent looking figure. Okay, so I'm going to clean up now around the chest line, the hair, uh, the hands. And I think we're pretty much it. I'm going to use some straight brown now, just to go around the hair. I'll just go around all the edges, clean it all up. Alright, getting close now. Cleaning up here underneath some of the hidden areas.
Yep. Just gonna touch a blue bit on the chest. Okay, let's just check the hands. Check the edge of the shoes, maybe just do around here. Just around the coal a little bit, I think it needs a little bit of work. And I think we've got a winner. Okay, there we go. So there's my final installment of painting a figurine with Scale 75 Artist Acrylic Paints. This is a Hearns Workshop Girl Walking and we've gone into painting all of the, uh, uh, the face, the flesh tones, clothing, the shoes and the bag. So. Let's quickly turn it around so you can have a quick look. I hope you've been able to pick up a few tips, uh, learned a few of the techniques that I've used. Just to get this figure, it's a reasonably big figure, 24 scale. And uh, this is what you can achieve in three hours. So it's not a quick slap to paint on, no tones. There's actually quite a lot of tones in here. Looks very, very decent. Three hours, pretty quick for a figure. Um, the masters would be spending many, many days doing a figure. But as you can see, you get a pretty good result. So with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to do this even quicker again, I guess. Or you can spend a little bit more time and uh, make a super, super detailed, super smooth uh, transition figure. But as you can see, it's fairly lifelike. You get some good expression in the face, which is very important. And then all the colors look pretty nice and clean. So that's my tutorial at an end. So there's three parts. So if you've only tuned into this part, there's um, I've got an introduction to Scale 75 paints, which goes through the, uh, the primary colors with the tones. And then we've got part one, which is concentrating on skin tone. Part two, which goes into completing the base coats of the rest of the components. And then this is part three, where we come to final stage of finishing the figure and that's ready to be mounted on uh, a diorama or even on its own stand by itself. So there you go, if you have any questions at all, uh, there may be uh, something I've missed that you, you may want to know a bit more about, please just leave um, some comments on the bottom uh, of the video and we'll get back to you. So thank you for watching.